This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, the perfume shrine of the fashion bunker. Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking top five perfumes for the month of March 2022. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel if you like it. Uh, thumb up this video. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together over there for extra perks. Thank you to all my patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday from my main channel. You're all welcome to join, tune in, and talk together. <clears throat> my voice is a little bit busted because I'm still healing from Corona. Brockstar, five months tier two member on the main channel. Thank you so much, sweetie, for the super chat. Thank you. So I might be coughing or something. I'm still healing. So bear with me, you guys. Now we're going to be talking top five perfumes for the month of <clears throat> March 2022. And mind you, uh, interesting to talk about Patreon in particular and um, memberships on my main channel. I don't do memberships on this channel. I do them on the main channel. But tier two members and tier two patrons get access to a special behind the top five perfumes for any month uh, video, which will be filmed next uh, weekend as well, live during the pre-shows, which are also given access to a tier two members and patrons. So um, be sure to tune in next week as a tier two member or patron for the behind the top five perfumes for the month of March, where all the psychology starts playing into these choices that I made. We go really in depth, analyzing the non-analyzable uh, behind the perfumes. So the first perfume thus far <clears throat> is hypnotic poison. Uh, Eau de Toilette in the current formulation, this one is from August 2021. Let me tell you something. Living for it. Yes, it's a little bit watered down. It's a bit less aggressive bitter, a little bit less bitter almond. And it has that vanilla candy moment in there that is really, really good. Uh, however, <clears throat> being that my lungs are so irritated right now, wearing it has proven to be a little bit of a challenge. It does make me cough. So, uh, but let's say half an hour into wearing it, that those top notes that irritate me soften down and then it's like really super smooth then on from then on out. And uh, yes, it is <clears throat> a wonderful morning perfume. It is also something that I like to use in this time of year. 3 p.m., 4 p.m. But it's also a great thing to spray in the morning. <clears throat> I have tried it in this time of year at night. Evening, not to bed. It's not something that I really go for uh in, in bed at the moment but uh, sometimes I do but at the moment no, it's more like morning up to 3 4 p.m. and it just gives me hope that's the key word right now and this time <clears throat> in the times we live in the second one is an all-dayer and all-nighter if you may it's obsession by Calvin Klein the eau de parfum and it's current for me of course I have the vintage as well I have the pure perfume I have the Cologne, but I'm talking about the current Coty version of the Eau de Parfum. It's slightly more peppery aggressive than its 80s counterpart, which was more smooth. But in the dry down, this one does hit a smooth note. You just got to know how to spray it right from a right distance. Don't puddle spray it. You got to spray it at a distance for it to kind of develop more that powdery aspect of Obsession and less that peppery aggressive, that green opening aggressive aspect of um, obsession. <clears throat> I love it to bits. Uh, it's an 80s gem. I have reviewed this on my channel, so go check out the review. Also, I reviewed this one. Go check out this one. As well as I made a video comparison between the current formulation, the 2015 formulation of Hypnotic Poison, from the bottle differences to the smell differences. <clears throat> obsession um is a comfort scent as well uh, because it reminds me of better times and it makes me feel kind of good cocooned you know just like a little bit it smoothens out the edge it smooths out the edges <clears throat> the third one <laughs> this is interesting 
is Liu by Guerlain, the Eau de Parfum. And I love it because it is such a play doughy vanillic version of Chanel number no. five. It is Guerlain's vanilla version. It is the Guerlinade version of Chanel number no. five. I have reviewed this one on my channel as well. Go check it out. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I cannot say number three without number four. <laughs> and number four is number five. Ha! A little game there. It is the pure perfume of Chanel number no. five. Um, there's a reason why both of these. You know, this is Chanel number no. five in Guerlain form, and this is Chanel number no. five in the pure perfume Chanel form. Uh, this is a spray bottle, 7.5 mil. And, oh man, what a magical perfume, both of them really. So they kind of balance each other out and both of them make me feel safe and at home and cocooned. And when I want to kind of facet out and evolve into different facets of number five, I actually go for Liu and back and forth. They kind of ping pong each other. So a uh, number three and number four are versions of number five. Ooh, the magic of numbers. And of course, all day, all night. These are, this one I often, just like Marilyn Monroe, um, <clears throat> I do spray it once. She put one drop, I do one spritz before I go to bed. It just lulls me to sleep. It's wonderful. Uh, same with this one. Although with Liu, it's more daytime version, kind of, you know, I, I like to wear this one during the day. It gives me, it's more watery, it's more cool, it's more snowy than the Pure Perfume of Chanel number no. 5. This one has more of that snow effect. And number 5, um, yes, with number 5, history has been made. Number 4 is number 5. <laughs> 5 plus 4 equals 9, flower of story, says Jesus, right? You see, I mean, everything is holistic, everything is connected. Number five is Poison, and I have it in the first ever version of the Eau de Toilette with the chunky stopper. Actually, it comes with this stopper. Hold on. There you go. The Eau de Toilette, and I, the Poison has not been in my top five for the longest time, which tells you a lot. I'm actually wearing Poison today, which seldomly happens. Um, but I'm craving it. I'm craving this old friend that I know so well that comforts me. So the Eau de Toilette first formulation with the 30 Avenue Hoche uh, address in the back. So, of course, this bottle came with a stopper. And then I hunted down years ago the uh, tester bottle of the 100 ml Esprit de Parfum, uh, which doesn't come with a stopper, but it's the same stopper as the Eau de Toilette. So... My Little Poisonous Apple, 100 ml tester bottle. You know, they were never made for sale, the 100 mils. They, were, they only went up to 50 ml, but splash bottles only. Jared Riddle, member for three months, and it sends a super chat. I wish Dior would bring back Midnight Poison. I do too, Jared. Good point. And thank you so much for the super chat. So Poison Esprit de Parfum uh, was released as... Uh, 7.5 well no that was a pure perfume it was released as a 10 mil 15 mil spray refillable and then 15 mil splash little samples of five mils uh, little miniature balls were released and then 15 30 mil and then also 50 mil splash bottle the most luxurious one in the hexagonal box was the 50 mil splash and then to in the stores distributed only in the beauty boutiques or stores or perfume counters were the hundred mil sprayers of Esprit de Parfum, but you couldn't buy them. So I bought a tester that still has the liquid in it. This is so gorgeous, so beautiful how they used to design them. And what I like so much about this one, so I wear this all day, by the way. <clears throat> There's no time of day or night in, in this time of year when, when I would more or less want to wear it. What I prefer about the bottle, the OG bottle, is how it's so beautifully rounded. And at the bottom, it has this perfect round shape. And they really worked. It's classy. And it's just so beautiful. 
I love the new one as well, but it I don't like the new stopper, and I don't like how cheaply they've done the bottom. It's, it's kind of like doesn't have a real. You know, it seems like yeah, let's just cut it off. You know, and then look how beautiful this one is at the bottom. I don't know. It, it it's lost some of its elegance, uh, to say the least. I really this this is a masterpiece. This bottle is kind of like. Why ruin it, Dior? Why? Why ruin it? Keep the original bottle. I, I, whatever. It's it's beyond me what they're doing there, but, um. So the fifth one, and also, eau de toilette, as I said, as well as the current version. As well as the current version of the eau de toilette. This is a thirty ml spray, eau de toilette. Yes, it's watered down. It doesn't have that bomb. Uh, bombastic opening but it's more tame yeah but I love it nevertheless there's a sweetness to this one that is uh, that blends very well with the Poponux and the more menthol um, camphorous aspect of of the tuberose which poison is famous for um, which can be a little bit uh, too overpowering in not necessarily the best of ways in the dry down in the OG formulation. Here it's toned down. So you have less of that um, camphorous, menthol -y, tuberose smell in there, you know, which is something that we also smell out in Tuberose Criminelle from Serge Luton. There's that moment in the dry down where Tuberose Criminelle completely turns and has that poison OG poison dry down from the 80s so yeah it kind of cuts it a bit shorter here so it makes it more wearable some people love that camphorous note of the tuberose uh, I have to be in a really special mood to want that because it's not a sweet note not that I prefer sweet notes but it's it's um there's something metallic bitter about that aspect of tuberose uh, which is not my favorite facet of tuberose and that is kind of the famous facet of tuberose used for poison so you got to be in the mood but I am in the mood right now <laughs> this month I am in the mood you know what I mean? I am in the mood. Uh, we love a beautiful bottom, says Jesus. Yes, for the bottom. Oh, my God, you guys. Uh, Paige says, Dior has a tendency to take great packaging, and over time they change it so it looks cheapened. Take Miss Dior Cherie Eau de Parfum, for instance. The metal bow was so much better looking. Hey, Charlie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Congrats on 50K. Thank you so much. This is on the main channel, you guys. <clears throat> 50k subscribers. Oh, also on the main channel to celebrate the 50k subscribers, released, re I released the Super Deco 50k merch as well as the 50k NFTs. Super Deco NFTs, one of a kind and only one of each. So go check those out at www.superdeco.com to get your own special NFT as well as fungible. <laughs> Wait non-fungible tokens these are fungible right you can get non-fungible tokens but also fungible things as well <laughs> do you know who cr credited with naming the perfume poison is an amazing name um i don't know i don't think fleshier the guy who actually is credited to have composed the fragrance i don't think that he gave it the name probably some marketing team at dior I don't know if there's one person in particular who can be given the credit for this name of a perfume. Good question, though. I would also love to know. But I have a sneaky suspicion it might have been a team of people. But maybe I'm wrong. If anybody knows, let us know in the comment section down below. So these would be my top five. They're very simple, really. I mean, no, they're not. They're heavy hitters. But they are much needed. Let me just say that. And more on all the details and why they are much needed in the behind my top five behind my top five perfumes for the month of March on tier two Patreon and members. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below 
why or which five perfumes you chose and why if you wish to share otherwise you can just leave a list it's always really interesting to see what type of perfumes smell the best to people in different times of the year it very it fascinates me a lot so thank you guys <clears throat> thank you guys so much for watching uh until next time oh wait my client was wearing blossom by burberry the other day i'm obsessed oh interesting Poison was the idea of the CEO of Dior Parfums at the time. Also, Dune was another, says Miss Marie. Well, thank you for that info. So there you have it, guys. A little bit of information coming out uh, everywhere. Um, uh, CEO of Dior Parfums at the time. Also, Dune was another. And I, I also love Dolce Vita. Uh, the bottle is amazing. Uh, what's your opinion on Tom Ford Black Orchid? Not my cup of tea. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Thumb up this video if you liked it. And until next time, never forget to never give up on fragrant love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.